Hi, uh, my name is Mitch Weisberg, and, and uh, we're just getting started tonight. I had a little bit of a scare because at 8.58, my internet went down, but, um, but I'm back. So uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed. I'm in the New York area, and we've been having flooding. So uh, let's, let's hope that, uh, that there's no more issues. And I see Tim um, raised a question that he had audio problem, but there was no audio at that point. So I'm hoping that everybody can hear me now. Um, so uh, welcome to EdChat Interactive. Tonight, we're going to be talking about uh, helping students become uh, innovators and entrepreneurs. We have the Conrad Foundation Director, uh, Claude Sharon, uh, talking to us. And uh, we try to make these interactive. So let me explain a little bit about how we do that. I'm going to um, expand the screen a little bit. Um, we all we all know that adults, and actually we all, everybody learns better by being active learners. And that means interacting, reflecting, and participating. So that's what we've tried to do with these EdChat interactives, is to give you information in a format that is more aligned with the way we all learn. We do that using the uh, Shindig platform, Oh, we have two events. Let me get to those in a, in a minute, but let me explain the Shindig platform first. Um, what you should see on your screens, and I'll shrink this again uh, for a second, is uh, you have an avatar or a video avatar at the bottom of your screen, and there's a menu attached to that avatar. Um, one of the buttons is text chat on the left. So I'd like you all to click that button. And when, when you click the button, what you should get is um, something that looks a little bit like this on the right. Uh, you see that there's a, um, a dialogue box that you can type into and leave messages for people. Uh, I'd like to encourage you all, why don't you introduce yourself to, to everybody here and type in something that you'd like to get out of tonight's session. Uh, what you will find out is that, or what, what I'll tell you, is that the one person who can't see what you're typing in is me. Uh, but Claude can, and he can use that to tailor what he's going to say to the types of things that, that you want to get out of this evening. So I'd like, so please open up that dialog box. Uh, you, at some point, if you want to, you can close it again. You can grab the top to move it. Move it. Um, you can um, click the avatar again to go back to... Uh, this type of mode where, um, where you have more screen. Uh, so that's the first way of interacting is through text chats. We're going to be doing that a few times during the evening. Uh, the second way of interacting, um, well, let me go back to the, to the screen here. The second way of interacting is uh, asking a question. Uh, if you click on ask a question, that question comes to me and I can pass it on to Cloud. Or the other way of doing it is by typing the question to text chat, in which case uh, Cloud can, can generally see it. Uh, third way of interacting is if you feel that you want to come up on stage or we call for volunteers to come up on stage and you raise your hand. I see that there is a person whose hand is raised. Uh, Daniel's hand is raised right now. Uh, when you click on raise hand, that lets me know that you want my attention and I can click and either text with you or if we've asked for somebody to come up on stage, we can bring you up on stage so that you can talk about what your questions are, what your contribution is, what your issues are uh, directly with Cloud or with Cloud and me. So that's the third way of interacting is raising your hand and coming on stage. And the fourth way of interacting is to have a, uh, a small group conversation with, uh, with another person. And we're going to do this a couple times also during the session. Uh, sometimes we practice, but I don't think uh, there's so much information today. I don't think we're going to have time to practice it. So, uh, but basically what you're going to do is you're going to click on the avatar of another person, and then you're going to be in a private video chat with that person. I see there's a question um, and that, good. And here's, a, here's an example of a question. So Dean has asked a question. When we get Cloud up, he can uh, answer the question. Um, the question is, how can passion projects be integrated more into non-STEM disciplines? Which is a great question. And, um, you know, when we get Cloud back up, when we get Cloud up in a second, uh, we can, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, but anyhow, so the, this fourth way of interacting is to have a private video chat. We're going to be asking you at different times. We'll pose a question and ask you to talk about it with one or two other people. You'll form these small groups. But when that happens, I'll come up on stage and I'll explain how to do that. So that's basically what we do in 
um, EdChat Interactive. And I just want to go back to this one other slide. I'm sorry I'm doing this out of order, but um, and that is what's coming up on Friday. Uh, we have Matt Harris talking about digital literacy for teachers and the big question, what does it really mean to be digital literate as, as an educator? Um, and uh, he is a, obviously he has a number of ideas, but he's going to be pulling ideas from the audience as well. And then on October 4th, uh, we're going to have Mia Lodato and Robin Williams, who are um, FETC speakers. Uh, and uh, they're going to be talking about, um, you know, how to use information that comes from your students uh, in order to inform instruction uh, and uh, kind of a play on the words because um, I can usually count and to me data is a four letter word. So that's basically the introduction of what we're going to be doing. Uh, let me find Claude um, here and there's a lot of people here. So uh, there's Claude and I'm gonna bring Claude up on stage with me And here he comes. Hey, welcome. Good evening. Thank you. So How are you much. doing? Thank you so much. I'm doing great. I'm here in Miami, so it's a little different than uh, New York. No weather no right. today. So, and our and our team is so, doing a little so bit better than New York. So it's good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just curious. I'm curious. Like, how did you how did you get involved with with Conrad? Well, okay, so thank you. So we're gonna go through some of those questions and more as we go through, but uh, Conrad Foundation, um, uh, the Conrad Challenge is something that the Conrad Foundation puts up. And it's, it's an awesome competition that enables student teams to go through a process uh, to tackle real world problems. And there's several categories. There's energy environment, there's health and nutrition, cyber technology, and there's other categories such as um, new ones, so a smoke-free world, uh, there's also uh, aerospace and aeronautical, and then there's a new uh, smart technology uh, category as well. So there's a lot of categories for more information on very specific information. At the very end, I'll point you to mm -hmm. that direction. But, uh, the Action mm -hmm. Foundation website, conradchallenge.org, is an excellent place to register and, and get started. So uh, I have two capacities, two reasons why I'm here today. Is one is to to share with some, to share with the group some of the amazing resources and um, tools that we use to go through uh, working with teams. So my, I, I was able to look at the spreadsheet of everybody that registered, and I was, I, I was like, wow, this is perfect. People are asking the right questions about how do they engage kids and more effective communication, soft skills, how do you get a team to work together efficiently? Um, in addition, uh, what tools do we have to help teams go from an idea all the way to a working mm -hmm. prototype. So th those are some of the deep dives we're going to do today. But um, uh, so so that's one facet, and the other is is how the how you can gain access to this CDM, which I will be speaking um, about tonight as well. So we're going to do that in a few ways. We're gonna we're gonna do an activity that is about like what, why is soft skills important in a STEM related pro project, right? So for people mm -hmm. that haven't had experience in teams that might be something that that uh you know we'll, we'll discuss a little bit we're going to do that through an activity opposed to a presentation so that's that's what's going to happen there so before i i continue uh, uh what i like to do is and, like and actually before you even continue there there was there was a question while we were doing the while i was doing the warm-up um so I, so I, i'm gonna i'm gonna pose it to you and then you can either um you can handle it however you want to but it's from dean who asked, how can passion projects be integrated more into non-STEM disciplines? Are you going to get into that during the talk, or do you have ideas about that? Or is that- I think we're going um, to get through it. I'll get through it. I'll start it now, and then we'll continue through the whole, the whole, perfect. The, the whole uh, webinar. So this is exactly what it is. I mean, the Conrad Challenge and what we do is all about passionate students going through the process. And we can't really separate STEM from entrepreneurship, and we can't separate uh, working on a project or a product or a design uh, that's going to help somebody and just focus on STEM, right? So you do need to be able to integrate uh, business application, real need, uh, being able to understand all those cross-curricular things and, and being able to share that with, um, with an audience. So um, what's well, great, this is exactly right on par. So thank you so much for your question, Dean. And we are absolutely going to tackle that today, okay? Okay, so I'm going to pull myself down, and you'll just have to let me know when to advance the slides. 
Okay. Okay, cool. So we're gonna we're just gonna leave that slide there for just a minute. And we're gonna actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spend about three to four minutes talking about, well, why am I here in front of you? Like you, you know, this individual's talking to us. Well, what what is what has he done and why why is he the de facto expert at this? And first thing I want to start by saying is I'm not an expert. But what I do have is a little bit of experience. So I want to share that with you very briefly. So I've been a coach, mentor, department chair for STEM for over 20 years. And I've had the privilege and honor to be able to coach six uh, international national championship teams that have gone from an idea to a working prototype, to a patent pending, to a lot of times to an end user. So I've had an unbelievable uh, run at that at the school that I'm in. Uh, from the school that I, I, I teach at, Gulliver Preparatory Schools, which is in Miami, Florida, uh, I started and built a STEM program that has four tracks, one computer science, engineering, as well as biomedical. So what that means is they started, a, they started a, you know, it's called a Project Lead the Way track, from, um, PLTW, and they can, they can take engineering, biomedical, or, or computer science for four years. So that's great. However, how do we tie all these departments together and how do we really get teams to work together opposed to working in silos? And this is one of the reasons why I really like the Conrad Challenge, because by definition, you have to work together to be successful. A little more on that in the future. So examples of what I've been able to do with Conrad Challenge, uh, Mitch attested to it, is we've had water system, energy systems. Uh, one of the big things that... Um, that we really care about, and Dean um, mentioned something about that is passion projects, and having empathy in a project is something that I think is so important. For example, uh, our system, our, our water system that we built in 2012 is in seven different countries, uh, Africa, Nigeria, I mean, I'm sorry, Nigeria, the Congo and Africa, uh, the Philippines, Haiti, uh, and other countries that assist with their water, and we also have systems, energy systems, and we're really big on helping people of need. If it's kids with disabilities, individuals that are up in age that need assistance, we, we feel strongly that this is an opportunity for kids to engage in that, in that realm. So, so why am I here today? Why am I speaking to you? Nancy Conrad, the founder and CEO of the Conrad Foundation, asked individuals like myself, not, not just me, um, and I'm going to read this. How can we help other student teams from schools around the world gain access to some of the current innovative tools so we can empower students to solve real issues and, and become successful entrepreneurs? So she, she uh, asked that question about four years ago and uh, going through the process of the Conrad Challenge. We've had a lot of success with that and we have a lot of resources and, and an unbelievable STEM program that, that we're privileged to have. We wanted to share so, so that is why I'm here to talk to you is to really share the main points today that we're going to focus on. So, you know, and again, I thank everyone for tuning in. Uh, you know, I'm in Eastern time, eight o'clock. I'm not sure where I know we're, we have people from England, Australia and different parts of the world. So I really appreciate your time tonight. So here are the main points that we're going to dive in today. And we're going to do an activity, effective communication, more efficient collaboration and one of the things that I really am so happy to share with you is how do we get everybody involved? How does everybody feel like they can contribute in a respectful way where everyone is actually contributing to every aspect of the project? So I'm really excited about sharing that. But before we can dive in that, I want to do a little activity and ask some questions. And, and what we're going to do is Mitch is going to help us coordinate with each other. So while we're doing the questions, we can break off into smaller groups. And the first, the first part of the question is gonna be a, a question for everyone. And what I'm gonna ask um, uh, from everyone, for anybody that likes to participate, is um, to put in the comment, okay? So this the first part is, there. it's kind of like a rhetorical question, but it's just a big picture, 30,000 feet above. And then from there, we're gonna kind of tackle that. And then we're gonna go a little deeper with smaller groups, so if I may. Um, have you, this is going to sound stupid, but we'll have to do this. Have you ever had a problem working with a team? Okay. So the way we're going to do that is in a comment, you either you say yes, no, or absolutely, or no, no, I've never had a problem. So I'm going to go ahead and just check out the actual comments to see if, um, if, 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 if it's just me that I'm the only one that's ever had problems in teams. Uh, or is someone unique and ha wants to share about what they do as well. So 
if you've had problems working with, and I mean any team, I'm talking about your peers, uh, your your students, um, um, any type of team whatsoever. So, in, and I'm getting a sense from the comments that, yeah, yeah, there's absolutely a consensus that, yeah, we can, we can say that they're working in teams is challenging, right? Okay. And uh, here's the second part to that question. Have you ever had a problem with student teams, students working well together? So now it's not you. I'm talking about a student team not working to, well together and you've struggled to get that team back on track. So if you're a coach, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you've done sports, if you've done a robotics team, if you've done first, anything that deals with, uh, with any type of sport or activity that requires you know, more than one person, uh, I, I, I think is, is, you know, it's fair to say that we've all probably have struggled from time to time. Okay, so I'm seeing a resounding yes from many of the comments and feel, feel free to, to address that. Okay, I mean to to um, to put that there. Okay, so the next part of this, and we're gonna we're gonna deep a we're gonna go a little deeper. Okay, we're gonna go one layer down, and we're gonna spend just a little time. And and the hope here is that once we see this as a whole group, you'll understand the importance of some of the tools that I'm gonna show you. So I know that everybody wants to see the tools right away, but I, I do think it's important to kind of explain the why. And as the slide says there, communication, collaboration, leadership and presentation. The one thing I do wanna say is this is not something you're born with, right? This is something that you can learn, right? So uh, I'm really excited to, to share some of those tools uh, briefly, okay? So here's the first one. And then Mitch is going to kind of uh, take over for a minute to kind of explain how we're gonna do this. So the next question, what I would like to be able to do is have you work with somebody else and collaborate with someone else with the with this next question. And I I'm going to say it and then I'll repeat it and then see if there's um, uh, any other uh, concerns in regards to the what we're trying to do. Why is it important for students to have an experience with working in teams? So I'll repeat that. Why is it important for students to have an experience with working in teams, okay? And and it could be in sports, it can be in a club, but traditionally in an educational establishment, you might be with a team member for a day, for a week, maybe two weeks, but how often are team members working four months in a row, right? <clears throat> so um, how important is that to, to have a deep dive with a team? So at this time, I'm gonna let Mitch uh, 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 refresh our memory and how we can actually um, you know, work with smaller groups. Sure. Okay. So, so the preferred way is if you have a microphone is to just click on the avatar of another person. You see people's avatars floating around the screen. You can click on the avatar of another person. And if you both have microphones, you can discuss this. And that's really the most fun way. But if you don't have a microphone, what you can do is you can put your response into the text box and you could respond to other things that people have also entered into the text box. So as a, so right now, I'd like to encourage you. I see a couple of you are doing this right now. I'm going to bring myself down, Cloud. I'm going to bring you down also so you can join any of these groups and you can talk to them. Okay. So um, I'll first bring Cloud down and then I'm going to bring myself down. And then Claude and I are going to come up in about, a minute or two and uh, maybe a couple of you will volunteer to come up on stage and talk about um, your answers so go ahead and talk or text if you don't have a microphone all right let me bring Claude back up and So um, I, I'm going to I'm going to take a stab at this also because it's, it, I have an interesting story involving my daughter who's who's now an adult. But at, he was, she's in a fifth and sixth grade combined class that did a, a you know that did a project every six weeks for two years. And um, her second year in the class, she was uh, she was also in religious school. And in the religious school, they broke everybody into into groups, and they said, "We want you to design a to create a play in your group on some biblical topic." 
And the kids in the group were like, well, what do we do? And she says, oh, that's easy. The first thing we have to do is research the topic. Then we have to come up with some ideas. And then we have to do this. She says, what I want you all to do is take 15 minutes, go into the library, research the topic, come back. And it was like, boom, boom, boom. And it's just like, that's what we really expect people to be able to do. And that's, to me, that's kind of the essence of why we want kids to work into groups. Um, so I hope I didn't spoil anything by like bragging about my daughter. Um, but, uh, what, what's, what are your thoughts? Are you there? Can you hear me? Claude? Yes, I can hear you. I thought that oh, was okay. to the group. So, okay. Uh, no, I, you know, that's, that's, that's interesting. I mean, what, what did you learn from that experience? that um that working in groups is a skill and that it, it it's something that you learn you have to do it you know you have to do it you have to be guided in it and then once you have it it's a skill that you have for the rest of your life no, that's absolutely. you know i guess yeah. in essence absolutely so you know this is one of the things that i like to see in the comments uh after speaking to everyone um i would like to get an idea of what if we could come up with one, I was going to list three, but if you could put one reason why we struggle with working in teams, any reason at all, please put in the comments. So it can be a phrase, it can be a word, it can be a sentence. And I get, a, I get the feeling that we're not going to be surprised by any of the resp uh, results. So I'm going to go ahead and see uh, at, in real time uh, some of the comments, hopefully, that we see of like one reason why teams struggle. Okay. And I'll throw, you know, and I'd be interested if, if, if somebody wanted to discuss this with you and, uh, you know, uh, and you have a microphone, if you raise your hand, we can bring you up on the stage and you can talk, you know, you, you know, you can talk to Claude about, okay. So there is a raised hand here. Um, Dean. Okay. Let's, let's get Dean up. Um, And here he comes. Hey, Dean. Good evening. How's You're everyone on. doing? How are you? Thank you. Good. I just wanted to just wanted to let you know briefly. I had the pleasure just now of speaking with Ismael in Mexico, and both he and I agree. Uh, he he came up with a wonderful quote. Uh, we're not sure who the author is, but basically it said, um, you know, working together, you can you can accomplish so much more. Uh, Compared to if you're just working, uh, like Claude said, like in different uh, different islands, you know. Um, I, personally, uh, I think that the productivity and efficiency increases. Um, but also, remember, we're here to try to prepare students for the 21st century workforce. And um, having spoken to people in medicine and engineering, Having spoken to people in biology and computer science, they all tell me the same thing. Um, not only are the hard skills important, but effective public speaking and working together collaboratively, those are just as important um, in order to be prepared for this 21st century workforce. So that's basically all I have to say. So uh, it, it was a pleasure speaking with you, Ismail, by the way. So thank you. Thank you for your uh, for your thoughts in the, in the, on the subject. So. Thank you. Okay. Dean. Well, Dean, thank, thank you. And just to echo a little bit of, of some of the things that we're seeing here, just a, a lack of focus, lack of trust, uh, uh, control, don't want to relinquish, um, to, to relinquish control, um, feel like you can do a better job than someone else. So it, it's, it, I'm seeing a few different ones from my side here. So um, I'll give it another 30 seconds or so if there's anybody else like that like to add anything. And then what we're going to do is we're going to hold off on the last question until after I want to, I want to go into, I want to do a little deep dive in some of the tools with the, with the Conrad design method. So you can kind of see how this is related and we'll, we'll bring it back full circle. So, okay. And is, Ismail, all, Ismail also raised his hand. So um, okay. I think I'm going to bring him on stage too. Okay. Hola, Ismael. Estás aquí. Hi there. Oh, my God, just speak Spanish. 
Okay, so welcome up on stage and um, Cloud, go take take over. Well, thanks. Um, well, the main problem that students face in Mexico about this kind of uh, event is the lack of opportunity to speak English. When I work with students, the main problem is the lack of opportunity to speak English. Uh, unfortunately, in my country, there is not uh, that importance in English. I really appreciate to Nancy Conrad the opportunity to work with her during uh, 2013 and wow. 2014. I had the opportunity to meet uh, Claude. I don't remember, yes, remember. Uh, your last name. How do you spell your yes. last name? Yes. It's Choron? Choron, correct. Well, uh, the main problem that we faced there was the lack of opportunity to speak English. I had to work really very hard in translating ideas, in translating messages, etc. But here in Mexico, the main problem that we had is that students don't understand English. Hmm. Okay, so so I, I, well, a, lot of, yep. a lot of ideas. A lot of ideas come to mind when you say that, you know, and in this day and age, what we're doing right now and being able to provide opportunities for students to do presentations back and forth and being able to, to facilitate that opportunity is something we've done with teams across the world. And uh, that's something that I'll definitely talk to you on the side with, because I do, I do think giving them more opportunities to speak in, in front of people they're not used to speaking and being able to articulate their idea is something that we can absolutely provide. So thank you so much for your question. Um, and um, I, absolutely so important. So thank you. So at this time, Mitch, if we can, I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, if we could put the, um, the, um, the PowerPoint, the PDF yep. a little bit bigger, and then we're going to go ahead and go through this. Okay. And I'm going to do a drive by, but I would like, Mitch, are you able to see the comments as I go through this? So if, if I can't to... see anything. Right. I can't see so anything we'll, people type. What we'll do is I'm going to go ahead and well, I'm going to do a couple of slides. I'm going to pause, see if there's a question, and then I'll go to the next part. So I'll do this in segments, okay? So because I don't have the access to that as well right now. So, uh, okay, the why, we've gone over the why. Promotes communication. The, the tools that I'm going to show you, uh, enable us to really uh, communicate effectively in a way where we're capturing, we're visualizing, and we're not interrupting and taking over. So that's that's an important thing. Next slide, please. Okay, so what you're going to see is an example of, of, a, of a sprint, okay? And in a design sprint, uh, it was actually inspired by Google Ventures uh, back in the day. Uh, and the precursor to that, you might have heard of it, them is Steve Jobs and the precursor to that was IDEO, right? And then the Stanford School. And basically the idea of sticky notes and collaboration and sharing and working with different disciplines together to, to solve problems, right? So this is nothing new. What, we, what we've done here in the last couple of years is we have actually created modules because the way they do it in industry is you go from Monday to Friday, eight hours a day. And at the end, you get a really good sense of should this go to market or not? Right. So what you're going to see are modules that can be done in the classroom, outside the classroom uh, in a very, very, uh, a very short time period. Most of them are set for 60 minutes. Next slide, please. OK, so here's an example. And if you and, and, and I think this is a good time to explain this. These tools are directly accessible once a team registers through the Conrad Challenge at, at Conrad. Uh, challenge.org and once that occurs um, uh, very shortly they're going to gain access and this is the first module of four that will be out so how to <clears throat> how to uh, come up with a challenge right so working in a team uh, how do you come up with a challenge to begin with and more importantly how do you do it so everybody has input and what you see here is 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 a, is a way to actually do that so if you're looking at the yellow the yellow is somebody's idea of a project. The, the, uh, the blue actual three by three stickies are something called a how might we, they're feedback without, verb, without you know, communicating verbally. 
And then we also have to go through an evaluation of blue dots, which you don't see in the screen. Next slide, please. So this is the second module, and this is, again, just a, a big uh, high-end picture, and then we're going to kind of do one example. Um, <clears throat> problem statement. So um, I don't know if teachers, like and most of you guys are teachers, right, and facilitators, uh, students love to fall in love with the problem, not the problem, but the solution. They want to tell you what they're going to do without really understanding the problem. So veterans kind of understand what I'm saying. So we made a module that enables us to really explain the why, the where, and when this happens, and it's visual, and you can see it on a board, and you can you can make you can provide feedback as well as evaluate which ones that are what prior solutions really. I mean, I'm sorry, what what problem statement you really want to address? Next slide, please. Okay, so once you figure out the problem statement and you get you have a better idea of what the issue is. The third module talks a little bit about remix and learn. And this is really just evaluating different prior solutions and, and doing a list of pros and cons so you can learn from it and make it better and build from it. And sometimes you might just change your idea because you realize, wait a second, it's been invented. So a lot, you know, real effective use of time and visualization where teams can see this um, um, is a very helpful step. So this is the third module. The fourth module, um, Next one. This is the, the final module of round one. So if you're participating in the Conrad challenge, this would be the one that you would want to do prior to November or November 2nd. October 19th is the last day of registration, a little more of that at the end. So what you're seeing here, and, and, and this is so cool, and I have some videos that I will actually uh, show you, like an intro video that I will send to all registered people that are in this uh, webinar. But if you look at this board, <clears throat> what you see here is, um, is each individual solutions, um, uh, each person's solution, you have comments from each person of the team, and then you're able to evaluate that versus a rubric such as time, resources, budget, and space. So you can really get a good idea of, okay, this is where we want to go or not. Next, next slide, please. Okay, so I'm going to pause in a second, but I want to introduce what I'm doing next so we're all clear. Um, everything I've showed you to this point is really just kind of this is what we're doing. This is what I'm going to show you after I pause for questions is a real example of a sprint that was done last year in one week that enabled us to address a problem. Should we or should we not do this? Right. So before I before I tackle this example, I wanted to see if there was any questions. Uh, if somebody wants to join us, I think um, uh, where you can raise your hand. If you want to just make a comment uh, on a clarification, you can do that as well. Thank you. Yes. Bring, I guess I'll, I'll bring myself down now. Um, and uh, Cloud, is has anybody put put comments yeah. into the text box? Yeah, there's a couple. Mary, thank you so much for chiming in. Um, um, some okay for so so the comment that Mary put up for some it's distracting and hard to concentrate. And I cannot begin to tell you that I am a squirrel person myself. If I, anything that's moving, I get distracted. Uh, computers. All of these things are very distracting and working with students uh, and, and a lot of times could be more guys than girls. It's a very distracting um, and, um, environment. So one of the things that I really like about these tools is that you're able to think independently, work independently, so you can share collaboratively. So I just wanted to comment on that, uh, that, that, at that point. So I don't think we have anything that we're going to really address just yet. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to uh, now show the, um, the I'm going to go through the sprint, and um, and uh, from there we can kind of go um, we could talk a little bit more detail about this. Okay, so here's this is kind of cool, and this is actually real. I, I I didn't make this up. So the last week of school to the day, we got our IT director that came in and said, Mr. Sharon, do you think we should have an Apple Genius Bar at our school? OK, and I looked at him and I go, well, you're asking one of the right people, but maybe we need to talk to some more stakeholders, students, 
<clears throat> maybe teachers and other people or people that might have this as a job already and see what they think. But what we're gonna do first is we're gonna run a sprint with students and they're gonna gather that information. And I want you to come back with the IT director, the administrator of the school, a student, teachers, and a few other stakeholders that might have an invested interest in wondering if we should have a Apple Genius Bar to support the school, right? So that was the challenge. Next slide, please. So the first thing is old school. Well, you better prove that there's a need, right? So I'm not gonna go through it, but if, as you can see to the right side results, when you click on that, it's gonna show two pieces of information. The first piece of information is just statistics to prove that more than half of the student body, the last week of school, where it works, yeah, I think someplace we can go to actually get assistance on our technology needs or get training would be, it would be a use, would be a benefit. The second part is, well, how do you want that help? Is it general resources? Is it training? Is it converting files? Is it learning how to do videos? So from that, we're able to determine, should we go to the next step? And from that information, we felt at that point we could keep going. Next slide. Okay, so this is where it gets really cool. In this situation, we had <clears throat> about 55 students chime in to this experience running a sprint in seven different boards as you can see there's a board back there and each student in, in the first step just to give you an idea they have to understand right so what questions do you think we need answered for us to determine if we're going to run we're going to be able to do a genius bar so that's what they're supposed to do individually they're going to post individually they're going to evaluate as a team and then they're going to narrow their focus. Next slide. <clears throat> okay, so as you can see to the left side, you have individual um, uh, papers with, um, with, I, with prior solutions, like things that are like the Apple stores, schools, colleges that already do it. And that's what the yellow stickies, right? And then the, uh, the uh, questions is the ones with, you know, you just see four or five questions and they're, and they're just the questions that stated. So at this time, we have seven complete boards. And next slide, please. Once we were able to go through an evaluation process and have students select, we were able to come down with our final 10. And the final 10 were basically uh, repeat questions, uh, students that ranked them from uh, uh, of importance to maybe not as important. And these are the questions that the team felt we needed to be able to address by the end of the spring. Next, next slide, please. Okay, so prior solutions. Now that we have the questions, what, what are the solutions and which solutions should we build from? That's the advantage of having the blue dots. The blue dots on, this, on the actual yellow sticky enable the team to keep that one. If you don't get a blue dot from your peers, that means you didn't even want to actually keep it and nobody else did. So it goes from seven boards to one board. That's a that's an awesome way to really narrow the focus of the team. Next slide, please. Okay, so now we understand the technologies. Each student is asked to actually produce their best solution. And their best solution is the three yellow uh, white sheet. And there's a little descriptor of how they actually see this best solution happening. I do want to point out the one thing I really like about this process is you don't have to be an artist to actually get your best solution, <clears throat> as you can see in, in these diagrams. <clears throat> in the bottom, one of the things I really like is something called an HMW, and, it, and I know it's a little hard to see on the screen, it's how might we, and that's a positive spin on a concern or an issue or something we should consider before we evaluate if we wanna do that or not, right? <clears throat> At the very top, each student gets a couple of stick, stickies, right? And in this case, it'd be two blue stickies, two thumbs, and, the, and this is what's kind of cool. This is like a little trick. <clears throat> if a the student can put a sticky on their best solution and someone else's, but more times than not, students will listen and hear and evaluate others and realize that someone else actually has a better solution than theirs and they will bring their stickies to those. So here's the, the caveat to that. If your best solution doesn't even have your evaluation, it is, removed from the pile and now we go from seven you know three or four boards of solutions to one 
And it, it's a beautiful thing to see because they're are the ones that are narrowing it. It's not an adult for the most part. It's really the students. Next slide, please. <clears throat> So the best solution, uh, ironically enough, is something that we use in our school uh, is Slack and Trello. It's a combination of a communication board and a collaboration board that will enable us to communicate with our, our, our constituents and, and Slack and, uh, and via Slack. And then Trello is a, is a board that you can actually put our resources. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so the next slide is an example. I know it's a little blurry, but if you could see that, this is an example, uh, a mock-up, right? But actually a physical, functional mock-up of where you would get your help for tr general troubleshooting, converting files, and all the way to the right is advanced training, which is what we do now. So what we realize going through this, we have students in our school that want to be, that want to learn how to video, do hardware, to, uh, you know, you know, produce, create things. So this is what this ended up being at the end. Next slide, please. Okay, so here's another step that most team student teams do not do. They come up with the best solution and then they go to adults and they present. And what I've realized through this process of working with Google and working with the, the sprint process <clears throat> is they do an excellent job of really explaining the steps of what a customer would experience step by step. <clears throat> and we call that a storybook. Next slide, please. Once you have that storybook, then you can actually, and unfortunately, we're not going to have this video, but this is a video that I will share with the group and, and, and some aspects of the, uh, of the project that I just showed you. But to your left, unfortunately, you do not see them. All the way to the left, you see two people. <clears throat> and there's actually 10 people there. There's the head of IT, there's teacher, there's the head of, um, there's a couple of teachers, students, uh, and a parent that are evaluating what it would look in real time. So to the right side, Sophia is, ex is asking Leah, who's uh, the student in the, in the, uh, in the maroon shirt, uh, how do you convert a file? And she's actually, this is about a one minute process of her assisting. And then she closes it with, well, if you'd like to join Slack so we can give you more support if you would need it. So this was an, this, you do five customers and from there you could get a good idea at the end of the week, should we do this or should we not? Okay, next slide please. So these are some of the resources that I'll share with you. One of the things that we skipped over is uh, we have Jake over here. That's actually, um, 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 once the best solution is completed by a student and they post it on the board, they get no more than a minute to clarify what their best solution is. At that time, might we and post it under it. And what we found is when students just keep going back and forth, a lot of it's not captured. And secondly, the best used car salesman in the room will, will tend to control the situation. Hence what I used to do when I was a student. So uh, I can relate to being able to work with teams and listening and hearing. Uh, to, the, to the right bottom, there's more tools that I, uh, that I will share uh, some of the tools so you can get an idea of the scope uh, of, of some of the resources we use. Okay, next slide, please. Was this, okay, so um, uh, this right here are all the tools you would need to complete any of the modules. And as you can see, most of these, most of these you can find at any store other than the actual clock, you know, a couple of stickies, uh, printing paper, um, different shapes, the sticky size and uh, Sharpies, a pencil, I mean, um, um, a, you know, just a couple of household things. So, which makes it very easy. You do need a white uh, surface. Next slide, please. So we're gonna zip through this, but these would be the protocols. I think one participant asked, well, what are the protocols? What do we do? This is an example of the protocols that we use for each step. And so this is what the students and the team would get with the facilitator that has done this before, because you do need to know what you're doing to actually run a sprint. And that's why we, we do train people to actually become facilitators. So you have step one, you have step two, and as you can see, the protocols are there. Next slide, please. <clears throat> okay, and then you notice it's really, it's really quick, it's right to the point and very simplified. Next slide, please. Okay, 
And then this is like stating before, this is how we chose the top questions, right? The top 10 guiding questions, we call it. And this is how they evaluated which questions were the most important to address, right? First there's be honest, don't lie, right? And the repeated question and the most blue dots, and then obviously the importance, like I mentioned before. That was a crucial part to determining what questions that we needed. Like for example, who's gonna run it? When are they going to do it? How do they schedule? What place is going to house this? Stuff that that sometimes takes weeks or even months in the school to, to determine, right? Next slide, please. I think that's, uh, Mitch, I think that might be it. Is that the last slide? There should be one more. Okay, so this is, so he, this is now, I'm going to bring it full circle. So what I showed you was a full week sprint to really understand if we needed to do a, a, a genius bar in our school. However, I hope that the, the group can see that these methodologies, these processes can be used in any step. For example, in the, way I, in the four that are illustrated in the Conrad challenges, how do we select a challenge that everybody's invested in? That's such a big deal. The empathy of a project, do we really care about it or are we making a cup holder that's going to be for a car? And no offense to that, that's probably not going to really engage kids for an extended period of time, right? So the second one, just to rehash, is really understanding what the problem is. And in my experience, working with individuals that we hand the devices to, such as the water system in Africa, I, I learned some really tough questions because I didn't know what the problem was. We had a water system in Nigeria, 20 miles from the University of Nigeria, and then we had it two miles from the University of Nigeria. The one that was next to Nigeria was used every day. The one that was 20 miles away was not, and we figured it had something to do with the, the distance. It had nothing to do with the distance. It was the actual water system was offensive to a tribe, hence why we need to really understand the problem. So I have several examples of why it's so important. And these modules help you really identify working with uh, experts and, and people in the field. So we're going to pause, bring everybody back together, and close it out with some questions, and uh, and then we'll, we'll we'll see if there's anything else that we can we can address. So um, I hope that you guys kind of get an idea of what we've been working on with the the Conrad Foundation and the Conrad Challenge, and we feel so strongly that there are schools that get it. They work with one team. They have a coach. They, these tools might not be as beneficial because they already have a methodology and they're clear and what works for them, that's fine. But in my experience, now going from one team to 20 teams, or in some cases working with teams all over the world, how do you get them to be on the same page? How do you, how do you facilitate so that you're not controlling the ideas? And, and I feel very strongly by saying that if the best companies in the world are using these tools, we can use them too. And this is what we're very excited about on the Conrad Foundation is sharing these tools. And we, we've customized these tools to work directly with round one all the way to the final uh, uh, individuals that teams that actually get invited to the Conrad Challenge that's in NASA which is kind of cool if you like space and you mm -hmm. like that, uh, I can go on and on. So I am gonna I'm gonna put the pause button in my voice and listen and click on the comment bar, see if there's any questions. And um, I, and, and then- I Okay, so I have a question. So I have a question. So is this, is the Conrad challenge as for a school or is it for a classroom? Would a school well, apply absolutely. or would a classroom apply? Right. So that's an excellent question. And, uh, and here's, this is what's awesome. If you go to the, you go to the website, it tells you all of that, but I'll give you the short answer. It's, it can be a club. It can be kids that are homeschooled. It can be kids from anywhere in the world. It can be kids from different schools a, uh, or a class and all of the above. What some of the things that need to happen is you have to work in a team, right? Two to, to five. And my mm -hmm. understanding it's from 15 to, uh, turning 18 or, uh, think, not have turned uh, 19 by the time the competition's going forward. And it, and a lot of those rules and specifications are at, on the website, but we try to be as inclusive as possible. And we have teams from all mm -hmm. over the world and awesome. So, just so like middle school could apply, right? So middle school uh, could middle apply school, or high school. Yeah. So there are kids that are 13 and there are kids that mm -hmm. are homeschooled that, that do well 
And it's awesome because they don't have that opportunity. So, so this is a, a very affordable way or option as well as connecting entrepreneurship to invention, innovation that will enable not just to have the opportunity to go to, to NASA and present in front of the top engineers and people around the world, but also have access mm -hmm. to the tools that enable you to go from point A to point B. Okay, so second question is, are there, if, if a school couldn't muster together the will to join the challenge, could they access any free materials? So they could learn from yeah, the materials. Right. So the, the, the materials that I work with presently and what in the discussion that we're having, and I'm glad you brought this up, is very specific to the Conrad Challenge. So the CDM, short for Conrad Challenge, are modules to help directly with the competition, right? Round one. Mm -hmm. However, and this is a good time to bring this up, what I definitely do do, and this is something that, that we're, what we do, I, I we have gone through keynotes, boot camps, uh, workshops, and we go around the world to actually go through this process with schools, with organizations, mm -hmm. and companies to share this. And what's really cool about it is students are at the heart of the discussion. So they go through this mm -hmm. process with adults. Just last year, we went to 15 different PDs across the nation. We went to Calgary. We went to NASA. We went to MIT. And we presented in mm -hmm. front of teachers at MIT this methodology. And the methodology ideas, we actually, uh, you know, you, you can't patent or protect a methodology or a method. However, the tools that we've created are very specific to enable, to empower teachers to have the resources to be successful in the classroom. So mm -hmm. if I personally, what students have gone over 200 sprints uh, at different wow. times and, and, and I fine tuned it so that, uh, it's simplified. If you would have seen this a year and a half ago, but you would have seen a bunch of different things that might have just confused people. So I'll pause. So then let, let's say um, a school it, it doesn't have any money. So I know that it, there's, a, there's an entry fee, which given the amount of effort that you put into schools is certainly reasonable. But what if a school is, are there scholarships or the, is, there, is there a way of sponsoring schools? So, yeah, I knew you were going to ask that question, and I forget the name. And I, I'm going to, Lauren's going to tell me now. But there is, a, there is um, criteria when a school is not funded correctly, or it doesn't have mm -hmm. to get what it's called. It's a specific term that enables you to gain access at a much lower rate. So that's and uh, let's see here. So um, I'm reading. So just I'm going to restate this. So the categories are aerospace and aeronautical cyber technology and security, which is really unbelievable, right? Energy mm -hmm. and environment, health, nutrition, smart technology, and a smoke-free world. And why did we pick those? Why is that what we're trying to work on? So I don't think we need to really under, I mean, we don't have to have a discussion about those are big it. Problems. That's where, the, that's where right. the issues are, what colleges are doing, and, and it's great to get that experience. And like one of the questions, how important is it for students to have a real experience, right? So look, I love robotics. Mm -hmm. I'm in first robotics. I'm in VEX. But to me, that that's that's a step to something that is a bigger picture. And this is what mm -hmm. this provides. Uh, do we do webinars and do we do support for teams that, that do not? In fact, one of the things that I'm very excited to report is we, we work with all sorts of schools with limited means. And what we would say to those schools is to reach out to us directly. Uh, tell us what, mm -hmm. what some of the concerns are and we will absolutely, I could tell you personally that Nancy Conrad has invested in having these tools and every single kid's um, 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 uh, the ability to have access to these tools. So, so thank, you for ask, thank you for your question. Well, so, so it, to me, this sounds exactly the types of things that we want kids to do. And so I'm going to put, you know, my, me, myself on the line and I'll volunteer that uh, to give it's, it's normally a three hundred dollar fee. I'll I'll volunteer for you guys to put three hundred dollars in to pay for 50 percent scholarships for two schools. You just pick the schools. So if two schools contact you and you feel that they deserve to get in, but they don't have the three hundred dollars, I'll fit those two schools. And you choose the schools, however the criteria is. I think this is because I think this is great. 
Um, I see there's somebody just asked a question. Um, yes. Can students in different schools compete on one team? That was from Dean. Yes, and that and that's a, that is such a big deal, right? You know, you, the whole idea is not just collaborating mm -hmm. within one classroom. Uh, it's collaborating with your school, your district, and and one story. We actually had three students from different countries working together, made the summit and presented, and they presented one of the best projects I've ever seen. And this is the irony of it: they never presented together, and right wow. when they finished presentation the alarm went off to state this is the time i couldn't believe it mm -hmm. you know how many hours you have to work with kids to get them to be anywhere near the vicinity uh, another thing that right. is, is brought to my attention is multiple teams get a, a get a big discount too so if it, if, uh, if there's more than one team they get a discount so there's a lot of those again a lot of those details and i'm going to go ahead and write it down again uh, but, uh, to the website so you can go to it but um, it's an excellent website that has that information. So other okay. questions? Yeah. Well, and um, th th this question wasn't actually asked, but um, I, well, I could do it also, but, but you can send the slides out to the people who registered so that they can have these slides and any other um, links or, or URLs that you want to make available, right? Because uh, you have a right. list of the people who registered, so you could just send them uh, access to the slides. Yes, thank you so okay. much. I'm, I'm glad you know, now that we're wrapping it up a little bit here. Uh, I do want to make it. Um, I do absolutely. If your question wasn't answered or you didn't feel like you wanted to 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 answer it, I mean, ask it now or just it's late and you're tired and you forgot. Uh, please, uh, my email. I'm going to put it down again. Uh, you can contact me directly, and I will absolutely um, uh, address questions. But I also will provide. Uh, help in any way I can and and guide you through this. That's that's uh, you know that's what I really like to be able to do is is to be actually steer people in the right direction. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, I, I will do that. And again, if there's interest in having somebody like us either um, do a webinar for your school or or really give us you you know you you see a group that wow this would be an amazing opportunity to really do a deep dive. Please reach out to us. This is something that. We, we take a lot of pride in, and there's no, even though web-based is great, there's nothing mm -hmm. like person-to-person uh, uh, -person interaction. So uh, I can't begin to thank all of you guys for your time. I, I still and there's two more questions, really actually. I think we, so I, I know we're technically yes. we're out of time, but there are two more questions. So uh, Dean asked, oh. is there a way for um, private people to help with the mentorship? Can college teachers or private industry people um, help you guys and help mentor schools? Can you do me a favor? Can you bring Dean up uh, uh, with us? Uh, yes. Uh, so now I have to find him. Uh, here he is. And so, yes, okay. let me bring him up. Yeah. And, uh, I and think Ishmael had a question. Ismail had a question too, so this, this is going to be a discussion. So let me just get Ismail's question out, which was, um, uh, can you visit Mexico and help get people excited in Mexico? Absolutely. I'm on board with that. No, all kidding aside, I'm not, that, this is not a joke. Um, if there is, if, if I really love the fact that I, I got a chance to meet you. I saw how eager you are to share this with the kids, and that's exactly our mission is to be able to empower these kids to solve problems. And I can tell you right now, I'm in, I I can't promise anything, but this is absolutely something that I will do whatever I can to, to assist. And if it means trying to get there and do that, I, I would love to start the conversation and see what we can do. Thank you for the question. Good. Okay, so here's Dean, and here's Dean. A little bit about what you were saying before. I think I know where you're going with that, but could you give the, the group a little bit of a background of where you're going with this? Yes, thank you for the opportunity, Claude. Um, so I've been working, and several colleagues of, of ours uh, have been working with uh, a professor at FIU, Florida International University, um, and uh, he has basically given the students tremendous opportunities. For example, for them to present their app ideas to PhD candidates over at FIU, but he also mentioned that he's willing to help us with different initiatives, different challenges or competitions. When it comes time, let's say that 
a group of students get excited about the cyber technology component of the Conrad Challenge, uh, and it's time to kind of help steer the students in, in, in a certain direction. Could we bring in uh, Dr. Rosso from FIU? Could we bring in other people to help guide the students in addition to you know the the official mentor uh, that that is with the students for the for the challenge. Dean, I'm so happy that you gave this question because it reminded me of what the screen to the all the way to the left. So Mitch is helping me, Dean's helping me, making sure I close <laughs> this the right way. So we're as you can see there. There's something that's called Join No Box Toolbox for Slack, and the intention there is to actually do exactly what you're suggesting is to get subject matter experts, to get people's questions answered, to actually provide direct support as you go through the competition or not. This community Slack channel is really for anyone that wants some assistance or guidance. So uh, even though you haven't, if you don't go through the Conrad Challenge, this is a way for the community at whole to actually interact with each other.